Just doing a quick mid-July tomato pruning update. I was just out here doing some kind of major pruning work because, um, you know, like everybody, I let it get out of hand. And um, I felt bad leaving you guys hanging after I've been uh, keeping you updated on the tomato pruning. So I'm going to turn the camera around and show you the jungle that we're dealing with. So this plant has some branches up here that are not tucked into the cattle panel and really it's just got too much going on. Um, probably a little bit because it's on this weird overlappy skinny part of the cattle panel. It makes it harder to shove the branches through and sometimes they do break so gotta watch that. Um, so I'm gonna weave them in here. You could use rope or string or zip ties or whatever and just tie them all on here but then what's the what's the benefit so right here for example this is a mess it's a mess of leaves and some of it's connected to this guy that i'm trying to pull through but some of it's just extra so we don't want the leaves to be too crowded like they are in here it's it's not horrible because they're not like folded up on each other but you just don't want too many leaves. I'm not even sure I'm going to take anything off of there. I'm going to take some off right here um, and in this area we're not really focusing on cutting off suckers anymore but I will like basically some of them break so I don't need to focus too much on them. I've you can see spots here where I've broken off the suckers so but I try to keep them spread out. This one has been mostly done. You can see the pile of leaves on the ground over there where I thinned um, all the leaves on this one. I've left some on the bottom lower than I like to. I don't like to have any leaves below the cattle panel, but this one has some nice big tomatoes in there. And I do try to leave um, healthy leaves that are down low for shade for the tomatoes. There's my other frustration lately. That's a hole. I've been springing my tomatoes with um, BT. And there's another hole there, I bet. Can you see it? I don't even know if you can see it. Anyway, I've been spraying them with BT, which is a caterpillar spray. And I'm apparently just not getting all the sides of the tomatoes. So I'm pulling off the ones that have caterpillar holes in them. I'm actually afraid I'm going to tear off this entire thing. So I'm going to use my scissors. I wouldn't want that. But I don't want to have the plant putting energy into the bug-eaten tomatoes. I want them to make the others good and healthy. So sad. That would have been a nice one. That one has two or three holes in it. So I guess I need to be more thorough with my VT if I want to prevent that. Um, but I normally, like, I pretty much always lose the first several tomatoes to these different worms. And it's not hornworms. I'm not sure what they're called. They're usually little stripy caterpillars. So, I wish my camera would stop going out of focus. This one... It has fruit down pretty low, which is why it still has leaves pretty low. But like, this is a sucker. We don't need this. We don't need that. There's some nice looking tomatoes on there. This right here is a fungus that we don't want on our plant. Um, oh, there's another leaf with it. That's basically what we're trying to keep at bay by clipping all these extra leaves and adding to the airflow in the plant. They're still going to get it. Um, in this area because it's of the humidity it's just we can't stop it but we can we can let the plants um have a chance by keeping the airflow you know between the leaves see like in here all these leaves are uh it's just, it's just too much going on so i i'm just and this is another branch there's some leaves this leaf broken so pull that off it it becomes a lot more of an individual plant thing as you move on so this plant 
This one has leaves below the cattle panel right here um, and no fruit. So I'm gonna take them all off because if there are leaves below the kettle panel, they can get splashed back from the ground and end up with, um, with more fungus issues and disease issues. This plant is also dealing with some aphids. Recently found out that that's I don't even know what that is. Oh, there's a caterpillar. Oh, that's my hand. That's some kind of little, little caterpillar in there. It's tiny, but I'm just going to do away with that. Um, let's see if I can find them. Like this. Not, these aren't even active aphids. They're dead. Maybe they just already died. I don't know. But I can see evidence of them, which is those little white like right here and usually I could see those on the on the tops of the leaves below them like they just fall down especially after I've been messing with the plants so airflow we're checking for pests um, we're checking for diseased leaves trying to keep the plants pruned up off of the ground. This one is also a mess. This is what happens when I don't stay on top of things. But you can't you can only do so much. Oh, that one's, you can see what I see. There's, that's blushing. Hopefully this one isn't full of caterpillar holes. Um, I'll probably pick that one tonight or tomorrow. I pick my tomatoes, another unpopular opinion when they're blushing, not when they're ripe. Vine, ripe, vine ripened tomatoes, um, in my opinion, is a marketing ploy and they don't taste any better. If you're, they're homegrown, they're good enough. Here's another good, big, pretty tomato with a caterpillar hole in the side of it. And this tomato is helping, helping to pull this whole branch down on top of the, uh, or to just, it's gonna break off. So I need to take some weight off of it anyway. So that's why I checked. And this one has a hole in it. It doesn't look like anything major right now because it's probably just a little guy in there, but over time this will rot. Um, and it'll ripen on one side and make me really sad when I realize that it's actually a rotten tomato. I mean, every once in a while, later in the season, I can spare a tomato or you know, save one that's had a hole in it. But, so that one had suckers at the bottom. And then it has some leaves that are lower than I want them to be. I'm cutting those off. See, now it's got a nice straight stem. The first tomatoes are right here. This plant, unfortunately is not what I thought it was. It was supposed to be a lucid gem, which is a, like a medium sized slicer. And this is obviously a cherry tomato plant. There's a bug eaten cherry tomato. It's covered with tomatoes though. And it's, I don't normally put cherry tomato plants in my garden. Cause look how big this thing is. It's huge. I usually keep them off on their own. So back to what's supposed to be here. This is a black beauty. Look at those. They're beautiful. They are um, like a purpley color on top and then they're green on the bottom and when they're ripe they turn red on the bottom. So sometimes I even have to look under every tomato to see what's ripe. This one's pretty good as far as the leaves. The tomatoes I would probably like to have a little bit more shade. Um, because with their dark color, they sunburn easily, but they're, they're doing okay so far. So these that are a little bit lighter are Blue Beauties. One of our favorites. This plant is doing really well. It's got lots of baby tomatoes, lots of airflow, looks pretty good. And this one has a branch hanging out that's really not supposed to be there at all. So I'm probably going to cut that off. This 
has low leaves. That's a sucker that I just cut off. It's huge, but it's a sucker. I should probably cut this one off too, but I'm gonna leave it for right now. There's one on the other side that's really big. And if I leave those suckers, then I have to find a way to weave them into the um, into the cattle panel along with all of the, the main branches of this plant. And that will cause some problems. This one is starting to ripen. You can kind of see if I can actually work the camera. I don't know if you can see it, but it's got some candle and clay on it, but it's um, it's getting a little color and I don't feel or see any wormholes, so that's cool. Oh, my camera's work is horrible, so you better just appreciate the knowledge. Um, let's look at this guy. Looks good. Lots of airflow. There's a nice breeze right now, so you can see the tomatoes. Um, blowing in the wind and I don't know. Anyway, okay, so we're back over to this row. See, there's one that's really out of hand right there. That's awful. There's, that's a sucker coming out the side, like three feet. Um, this side actually looks pretty good. This tomato plant looks good, except it's got suckers on the bottom and low leaves. This one's got low leaves. This, this is the other side of that mess. I will get to that in a minute. And it, Look at this one. Um, this one has got, this is a really good example of a single stem. I, I was good with my pruning early on on this one. Um, it has got, what are you? Oh, it's a Dr. Waichi, is that what you think? I don't know. It looks really good though. And this is a totally crazy cat-faced yellow tomato this one has some liquid on the top I'm not sure what that's about unless it's coming from oh yeah that one is rotten oh it's mushy but... mm. that's gonna look like on a video but there's some kind of spider on it it leaked hey, look at that that's how rotten it was um and it's got a little there's a little not little but a good sized tomato on that stem i didn't want to just cut it off there's some more aphids on here they all look dead most of them look dead so that's cool but this guy all right, so this tomato is probably fine. It just had leaking from the other one. Um, and the cat facing, if you're really selective and cut off your buds early on that look funny, you know, some tomato buds look, or flowers, look all big and crazy. Not sure if these are gonna develop. Um, if they look all crazy and big, they, um, they can make crazy, funky tomatoes. I don't see any, like, these look like normal flowers. But sometimes they're just super, like, doubled and... Right, I'm gonna also take out some of these leaves that are, like, tangled in the middle. That one. This tomato here has bug holes all over it. So I'm gonna get that off. I should just be strapping a camera to my head for this. GoPro tomato burning, right? It's a thing. Anyway, there, this plant looks like it just had a crazy aphid um, infestation that I somehow missed, but they're all gone now so maybe the ladybugs came and ate them so i'll come back through after i'm done filming and everything i pick up all these leaves and all of these tomatoes that i had to cut off and i'll take them to my pigs because they don't mind caterpillar infested tomatoes so i'm putting the 
branches, weaving them through the cattle panels. When you do this, if you don't want your hands to be stained brown and green for ever, wear gloves. Another tip. Okay, so down here, there's just stuff everywhere. We're gonna cut this off, put it in our pile. We're gonna cut this off. I'm not cutting up any higher because there are fruits on these weird branches that are hanging down. Look at that, there's one all the way down here. Um, so I'm gonna leave that, but I gotta cut off these yellow fungusy um, aphid covered leaves. There's another one. I've got some little suckers like this guy. Um, again, you know, we like to leave some shade for these fruits, but you can't leave the yellow spotted leaves. There's kind of a knot of leaves right here. I'm gonna try to pull that apart. So there we go. Now we got some shade and some airflow because they're not all tangled up. This guy is gonna have to come up through here and I'll weave it back and forth to hold up some of the weight of these fruits. We've got some, I don't even show what's going on here. The aphids are really bad. But again, they look dead. So maybe they were really bad last week. All right, that's a lot better. See, there's a little bit too much going on right here, but I don't really know. I'll just pinch off this sucker in the middle. That'll help. There, I get rid of a leaf. Um, I want to leave some shade for these guys, so I'm, I'm not doing too much. But now you can kind of see airflow around all the leaves on this plant. We got, um, we've got some tomatoes down here. The aphids look dead. We can move on to the next one, which is another ridiculously well done. This is a pineapple tomato, and this is a very good example of mostly single stem. So I guess I'll see how this goes. This is one of the ones that I broke early on and I stuck a band-aid around it and you can see how it's grown back and grown around the band-aid. So this whole top of this plant is based on that broken part. Let me stand up here. Um, and it also broke up here. And this band-aid is kind of coming off, I'm not sure. I think it was broken where I got it and it's broken there. That's crazy because there's not even like because there's a little scar. It's like completely healed. Um, which is what they do. So you, I stopped band-aiding them back together. See, so yeah, I just broke another one. Um, it's just a sucker. There it is. I've stopped band-aiding it back together because it's just not worth it when they have when they're this big unless I break off the main stem, which this one, that's why it's got two band-aids because that was the main stem and you don't want to break off the top of the plant, the, the main, the main top. I mean, if you do, then your plant will just branch out from, see, I just broke another one. These are both the same kind though. They're pineapple tomatoes and uh, for whatever reason, they seem to be more brittle. They break easier. They're the only ones that I'm consistently breaking over and over again. Look at all those tomatoes. They make a really pretty yellow tomato with kind of red marbling. Okay, turning around. We're on the back row now. These two I've already worked on last week when I was pruning the herbs behind them because there was just not enough airflow. And you can tell how bad the fungus is up this far. It starts at the bottom and it works its way up. That's why if you keep the bottom leaves off and cleared, you're in better shape. Another tip that I don't follow because I know all of my plants are going to have this fungus. It's just a matter of time. They probably all have it now. It's in my soil. It's here. Um, but if you use um, separate scissors or clippers, 
or wash them in between plants, you can help prevent its spread. But it's here, so I'm not worrying about it. I can only do so much. I also, um, I could be spraying like some preventative stuff. Uh, copper, I have a copper spray I've used before, but it, it really only works as a preventative. I use that to try to prevent this kind of fungus from popping up like when the plants are tiny. And I haven't had to use that this year. Like still in the greenhouse, tiny. There's another, another wormy tomato. Lovely. So, this one. It looks like I'm going to start getting tomatoes real soon now. Even though I've lost several um, to these worms, I'm going to start getting some. 